Again, welcome to Data Structure and Algorithm Course. In this lecture, we're going to study how we can represent a graph as an adjacent matrix. So our main objective is to represent a directed graph as an adjacent matrix. And here we said, since directed graphs are relations on their vector set, we can adopt the concept to represent directed graphs. So in the context of graphs, we call this representation as an adjacent matrix. So for a graph G, which consists of a vertex V and edges A, define a matrix A sub G by rows and columns. Uh, again, as we know, a matrix consists of rows and columns. So one for each vertex in V, so if the value at i row and j column is one if i vertex connects to j vertex, otherwise is zero. So we can easily generalize to a directed multigraphs by putting in the number of edges between the vertices instead of only allowing zero and one. So again, for a directed multigraph, g, which consists of V and E, we define the matrix AG by rows and column. Again, one for each vertex, but this time the value at I row and J column is the number of edges with source, the I vertex and the target, the J vertex. And the best way, again, we're going to see an example. So representing graphs, we are zooming, we have a vertices, and these vertices from one to up to n vertices. And an adjacent matrix will represent the graph as n by n matrix. So what we mean is that uh, if we have a graph with 10 vertices, then the size of the adjacent matrix will be 10 by 10. If the vertices again are five or six, again, it will be either five by five or six by six. So the size of the matrix depends on the number of vertices we have in the graph. So this is an example of a graph. And we have a graph with one, two, three, four, again, vertices. And the edges, again, this is a directed graph. So from one, we can go to two. The weight is A. From two, we can go to three. The weight is B. But we cannot go from three to two. Also, we can go from one to three, but there's no three to one. Also from four to three, but we cannot go three to one. So if we are going to represent this graph again, as an adjacent matrix, first we are going to count the number of vertices we have. In this case, we have four. As we all know, a graph consists of vertices and the edges are the lines that connect the vertices. So the matrix again consists of rows and columns. Since we have again four vertices, we are going to have the matrix size as four by four. So we represent the one here represent vertex one, two represent vertex two, three represent vertex three, and four represent vertex four. So now the first thing we have is zero here. How do we get this zero? We stand at vertex one and there was no loop, which means vertex one, if there's an edge from one back to one, from one to one, which is a loop. We don't have any edge that connect one back to one again. So that is zero. Now, when we move to two and again, two by one, again, the first row, second column, we are still standing at one. And at one, we have an edge from one to two. So we write one. Then the next, we still in the first row, now third column, which means we look if there's an a edge from one to three, and there is one to three, so we write one. We still at one, and we are in the fourth column. So we look if there's a, an edge from one to four, there is none. So that would be zero. Now we are going to the second row. So we will be at the second node or the second vertex. 
Now, when we stand at second vertex, there's no edge from second vertex back to second vertex, which we normally call again the loop. So we represent it as zero. And the first, actually, first we have from, which is the zero here from two to two. The first also we have from two to one because we are in the first, again, row, a second row, first column. So second row and first column, can we move from two to one? No, so we have zero. Then the second is the loop from two back to two is zero. But we have edge from two to three. So from two to three is possible, so we have one. Then from two to four, there's no any edge, so we have zero. Now we are in node three. Node three from three to one, because we have the first column, three to one is zero because we can't move, there's no edge from three to one. Same thing, zero for three to two, because there's no edge. And also we have three to three, there's no loop, so zero. And also three to four is also zero. We cannot, we don't have no edge a direction from three to four. And the last will be again, our fourth row, which we had node four or the vertex four. Now from four to one, there's no any edge. And then four to two, there's no any edge. So both are zero. Now from four to three, we have one edge there. So we have one. And then four to four, there's no loop. So again, it's zero. So again, this graph represents as a adjacent matrix, and that's our result. Again, the size is four by four because we have again four nodes or four vertices. Now let's see another example. Uh, so here we say how much storage does the adjacent matrix required? Now based on uh, a matrix consists of what rows and column. It's two dimension. So it will be V square. V is the number of, uh, again, the vertices. So we can see from here, again, we have four. So we have four by four. Now, another question is, what is the minimum amount of storage needed by an adjacent matrix representation of an undirected graph with four vertices? Again, the example we gave was directed graph. Undirected graph means, again, if I have only one edge, it can go both sides. Let's say we have an edge from one to two. With directed graph, it has to go only one direction. It depends on the arrow. And that will go from one to two or two to one. But undirected graph means it can go both direction, one to two, two to one. That's why it's undirected, there's no direction. So here, yeah, if we say, what is the maximum amount of story needed by adjacent matrix? representation of an undirected graph with four vertices. The, since it's undirected graph, four vertices, here we are going to have six bits. So undirected graph, the matrix will be symmetric. And here we are assuming there's no self loops. So we don't need diagonal. And diagonal means, self loop means again, from one to one, two to two, so if we look at this loop, uh, here, the graph here, there's no in a loop. If we should have, have a loops in each vertex, like on the diagonal, we are going to have one, one, one throughout. So if there's no any self loop, then there's no diagonal. Diagonal matrix uh, means we have zero everywhere and across we have one throughout. So now the year we say the adjacent matrix again is a dense representation. And the dense representation normally, if there's too much storage for large graphs, but also it can be very efficient for small graphs. And also most large interesting graphs are sparse, which means they are less again dense. So example would be the Prana graphs in which two, uh, in which no edge cross and may have the E of big O V. This is using the Euler's formula. Also for this reason, the adjacent list is often a more appropriate representation. 
And another example for adjacency list. So adjacency list, uh, we know for each vertex V belongs to, element of V belongs to the set V, store a list of vertices adjacent to V. So the concept here also is for directed graph. And in computer science, we use the concept of array. So for example, we saw how adjacent matrix is a rows and column. With lists, we're going to have a list of items, more or less like array. So to represent this graph as adjacent lists, we will start with one. Normally, we can also start with the index of zero. The index of zero means the first node. But since we have one here for simplicity, we will represent adjacent one. So when we are at one, we will look how many nodes have a direction from one to any of the nodes. So for example, from one, we can go to two. From one, we can go to three. So when we look at the answer for the first node, we have two and three. Then we move to two. In two, there's only edge from two to three. And we have the three. Then we move to three. Three, there's no any edge to any of the node. So that will be empty. Then we go to four. In four, we have only from four to three, only one edge direction, so three. So this will represent, again, our graph, which we call the adjacent list of our graph. We can also keep a list of edges coming into the vertex if we want to. So another example for adjacent matrix using directed multi-graphs. Uh, there's a question here, what is the adjacent matrix for this graph? Here we are using a multi-graph. We can see that, uh, for example, from two to three, we have three different edges instead of one edge. And so this is normally called when you have two vertices with two or more edges, use the concept of multi-graph and it's directed because each edge have a direction. So how do we represent this? Let's look at it. First, we are at the same step as our simple graph. So we have the first node, one, two, three, four. So it will be four by four again, the size of the matrix. We are at number one, so we'll stay at the first row. Each node, we stay at each row. So first row. So first row, first column, we don't have no loop, so it's zero. But from first to second, node we have this is undirected so we have two edges so that would be that's why we write two now from two to three yeah we have one two to four we don't have any edge so it's zero i'm going to the second node so second row second row from two, two to one again again this is undirected so one to two two to one it will work because it's undirected. If it's directed, then we have to count the directions. So two to one also will be two. Then this time we have two loops. So two to two will be two. If I mean row two, column two means a standard two and how many edges go from two back to two, which is the loop. We have two, so it's two. Then from two to three, we have one. Two to four, we have zero. There's no any edge. Now we are in position three. We start from three first column. So three to one, we have one. And three to two, we also have one. Three to three, we don't have any loop, so it's zero. And also three to four, there's nothing, so it's zero. Now we at four. Four to one, there's no edge, zero. Four to two, there's no edge, zero. Four to three is zero. Four to four is one, we have one loop. So again, that's an example of uh, using the undirected. So undirected graph, the edges can go both directions. Now we already saw a way of representing the relation on set with again, the Boolean matrix. Now let's try this also and the same concept, but this time we have directed graph with almost uh, each node have a loop. So we can see that in the diagonal, we have one throughout. So when we start at one, there's one edge that start from one, go back to one, so one. One and two, 
we have only one edge. One and three, we also have one edge. One and four, we also have one. Now we go to two. Two and one, we don't have anything. Again, this edge move from one to two direction. It doesn't go from two to one. So it's zero. Then we have two back to two. Yes, one loop. Two to three, there's one. Two to four, there's also one. Now two to one again, there is none because the direction is from one to two, but not two to one. Now we are three. Uh, when we look at three to one, there's nothing. The direction is from one to three. There's no three to one, so it's zero. Three to two, also the direction is two to three. There is no three to two, so it's zero. Now three to three, we have one loop, so it's one. And three to four, one direction, so we have one. Then we have our last node, which is four. Uh, four to one is zero. There's no any direction. Four to two also is zero because it's two to four, not four to two. Four to three also is zero because it's three to four, not four to three. Then we have one loop. So four is one, four to four. So that will be, again, the representation of the graph as an adjacent matrix. This is a directed graph with four nodes. So the size is four. So that will be the conclusion of this uh, short lecture. So again, this lecture is focused on adjacent matrix uh, and also adjacent list, how we can represent a graph as an adjacent matrix or adjacent list. Again, if you have any question, you can send an email or you can post your question in the Canvas discussion board. So again, see you in the class and thank you for your time.